Welcome to this animation on science-based targets, which an increasing number of businesses are setting to reduce their carbon emissions. Over the next few minutes, we're going to give you an introduction to what science-based targets are, why they're relevant to you, and how you can participate. But first, we'll tell you why they are being set. There is a growing awareness of the climate emergency, enhanced by high-profile personalities such as Greta Thunberg and David Attenborough. Countries, organisations and individuals are coming to the realisation that we all have a role to play in reducing carbon emissions for our benefit and that of the planet. Increasingly, we are seeing new stories of raging wildfires, more frequent flooding as well as melting glaciers and ice caps. The world is heating at an increasing rate. Most governments are responding with national carbon reduction plans. The UK amended the Climate Change Act in 2019 so that we as a country need to be net zero for carbon emissions by 2050. In response, many organisations have set science-based targets, putting them on a path to playing their role in avoiding the worst effects of climate change. This can benefit organisations by being more prepared for future legislation, looking further ahead and meeting the expectations of their stakeholders. But won't it cost a lot to achieve? The economics show that investing now will save money in the long run. If we take action now to address climate change, it will cost about 2% of GDP year on year. But if we do nothing, it will cost between 5 and 20%. Science-based targets, or SBTs, are a method for organisations to set reduction targets for their carbon emissions in line with the internationally agreed Paris Climate Agreement. This is when the world agreed to limit global temperature rise to well below 2 degrees C above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees centigrade. Any organisation choosing to develop science-based reduction targets needs to select a suitable pathway to reducing their role in carbon pollution, depending on their industrial sector and own circumstances. They also need to demonstrate how they are going to achieve their reduction target over the 5 to 15 year time frame. What actions will they take to reduce their own emissions as well as those of their supply chain? Science-based targets require businesses to look not only at their direct emissions, such as the fuel they burn and the electricity they use, but also their indirect emissions, where these are very large. And in a sector like the built environment, between 50 and 99% of a contractor or FM service provider's carbon emissions are in the supply chain. As a consequence, more and more clients are asking their suppliers about their carbon emissions, particularly as many of them are developing their own SBTs. Measuring your carbon emissions will result in identifying carbon hotspots, and hence opportunities to reduce carbon, be more efficient and save you money. It will also give you the data to report to your clients for their SBTs. Undertaking this will help you keep lean and ahead of a changing reporting and regulatory landscape. Put systems in place to capture, measure and analyse data on your carbon emissions. This will include your direct fuel consumption, any process emissions and electricity. Don't forget your own supply chain. If you buy lots of carbon intensive materials like steel and plasterboard, they will be significant contributors to your footprint. Set clear responsibilities of who will do what, by when and how. Once you have baseline data, develop a plan to take action on the hotspots to reduce your impact. Engage your suppliers on what they are doing. And when you have made progress, report it to your clients and stakeholders. Tell the world what you're doing to reduce carbon emissions. If you're keen to get involved, the school has a climate action group through which we are collecting data and providing learning. Get in touch if you want to know more. To do the best job, we need involvement from across the whole built environment. This concludes our animation on science-based targets. And remember, you can't manage what you don't measure.